In the last video, we looked to the future of Python. In this video, we're going back to the past. In fact, all the way back to 2000, where F strings were being proposed for the first time. Yep, yeah, you heard me right. F strings in 2000. What? Well, this is something that a lot of people don't know about Python. So there are a number of ways to do string formatting. You have the percentage syntax, you have dot format. Uh, in Python 2, obviously, they were a lot more limited, but F strings were actually one of the things that are proposed and then rejected. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the proposed implementation of these F strings, why they didn't come to be in 2000, and why they were eventually implemented a whole 16 years later. If you find this video helpful at any point, then consider leaving a like to let me know and maybe subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this. If you're feeling particularly generous, you could support this channel either by becoming a member or a patron. All the information you need is in the description below. Yeah, that out of the way, let's see what these first F strings look like. So this is the pep for it, pep 215. And as you can see, it was created in 2000. <laughs> a whole 24 years ago, uh, or 23 and a half years ago, I suppose to be precise. But that's a full 16 years before F strings made their way into Python 3.6, which is kind of wild actually, how Python had this idea so early and it wasn't implemented for such a long time. We'll get into why it wasn't implemented a bit. But first I wanna talk about the specification of it, which was essentially Unix-like, um, or well, dollar strings, I guess, or string interpolation, I suppose is the official name, but it used a dollar prefix and then you had a dollar character within the string to denote a variable replacement. So instead of an F at the start, you'd have a dollar and then instead of the curly braces, you would just have a dollar sign. You could have curly braces with the dollar sign, but they were optional and that, it goes into a bit more detail down here. Uh, so proceeded with the dollar syntax with the single or double quotation mark, and it can come before, so R or U were already there, so raw and Unicode. I don't think Unicode's around anymore. I figure it's either going to be removed soon or, or, or it already has been removed, I don't remember which. But it was gonna be alongside that. So you now have, you know, you can have RF for example. And then it has some examples down here and that's basically the end of the pip. I mean, <laughs> you know, pips weren't quite as detailed back in the day. Uh, but you had, so if you had A and B equals five and six, you had print and then dollar A equals dollar A and then B equals dollar B. You could also do expressions. So you could do A plus B equals dollar um, A plus B. But the way it did that, it goes into a bit more detail on the security issues. So dollar has the power to eval, but only to eval a literal. As described here, there's no new security issues. But um, yeah, that seems pretty suspect how it's basically an eval in there and there's a different implementation here and then yeah this is the end of the pep so it doesn't really go into huge detail about why this didn't happen but the reason it didn't happen is because it was superseded by a different pep so if you go back up to the top superseded by pep 292 just simpler string substitutions so this was created in 2002 and made its way into python 2.4 and it basically talks about you know it says pep proposed an alternative thingy but this is the string templating syntax, which I imagine a number of people have never heard of because I hadn't heard of this until very recently. It was actually, I was doing um, some research for the optimizations video. I was looking into potentially doing something to do with strings and I came across this template thing and I'd never seen it before in my life. And this is what replaced the original form of F strings, <laughs> having to create an object and then having this substitute method. It was a lot. It's it's an awful lot, and I I honestly have no idea why they went with this over that because this is not simpler. This is just not simpler at all. So it goes into more detail down here, and I guess it's simpler to implement in that you don't have to have all these combinations of string prefixes like you would if they went with PEP two fifteen. But there's also a bit of ambiguity as to what could be formatted. So if you had something like this, you had sys dot modules and then sys. Um, would return this. So this is, I guess, sort of what you'd expect it to return. But I suppose this could be quite, you know, sort of ambiguous as to what it was actually um, returning or what it was actually formatting or what would be included in the format string and what wouldn't be included in the format string. My answer to that is you would have thought that the curly braces would have denoted that. <laughs> would have thought they would have made that quite clear. Like, it's literally JavaScript syntax. You have the dollar sign, and you have the curly braces and anything to format goes in there. 
And that seems reasonable to me. That actually seems more reasonable than our current F-string system. We just have the curly braces. And then if you want to do some raw curly braces, you have to put some curly braces within the curly braces. And that just looks really weird. Um, but yeah, it's talking about the double prefixing here. It's also talking about allowing for arbitrary Python expressions. Um, which, yeah, this focus is on the fact that it'd be more complicated. Uh, they said it didn't introduce any security issues. I'm sure that's probably fine. But to me, from an outsider, that seems really risky to just have a raw eval. So the way the new F strings work, I actually, I can load up the actual pet for the new F strings. So I know the number, 0498. Uh, so what it actually does, yeah, it uses this um, Dunder format method, which is only around since Python 3000. It was introduced in PEP3101. So this wasn't a thing they could do until Python 3. And then, yeah, this uses a much safer, or I suppose a much less convoluted as well version of it, which is why these F-strings have come to be. But yeah, it does actually mention PEP215 here. It's supposed to support a subset of Python expressions did not support the type specific string formatting, which is introduced in PEP 3101. And this was August 2015. Okay, so it was, that would have been, it would have been 15 years before, not 16. Okay, I just assumed because Python 3.6 came out in 2016. So I suppose you could say 2016, but you know, either way, it, I suppose it doesn't necessarily matter. Um, but I did want to to go back to, to 292 and to, to really emphasize how weird this was that they went with this. I did some experimentation. So this is a little benchmark thing that I did with all the, the format styles. So these first two are the format styles you had in Python 2. Uh, this format style with the dot .format method was introduced in Python 3, specifically Python 3.0. This came along with all of the, there was this huge pet with all these like um, format specifiers, like the thousand thing, you know, anything to do with comma, the thousand separate, like that. that was all Python 3000 stuff. But I'll just put that in here for the sake of it. And I wanted to compare the speed because this percentage syntax could already take keyword argument stuff. So you have this substitute here for the templates with the globals. You have this percent, which yeah took a dict, which is a slightly odd syntax. And then you have the format down here. And if we run this, and this is running for a million times, by the way, which is default, you can see that the template syntax is far slower 1.1 seconds to do a million times versus 0.2 seconds or 0.28, I should say, uh, for the percent syntax. And it's actually even quicker if you don't have a dict. If you just modulo it over tuple, it's even faster than that. And then the dot format system was 0.34. Of course, F strings are a lot faster than that, but I haven't included those here because you can't really template them. I believe they're called template literals or template string literals technically, but you can't really use them as templates because you have to build the string there and then. But out of the three kind of template specifications they have, this string.template was so much slower than the percent syntax. And I get that this is a bit ugly, but really? <laughs> like having to import a template from string and having to create this object and then having to you know, substitute this in just seems so verbose and so unnecessary to do. So I don't really know why PEP 292 um, ended up you know, you know, being voted in favor of 215. But you know, Python almost had F strings 24 years ago. And it's, it's fun to think of how different the language would have been if this pep had been accepted all the way back then. But yeah, that's everything I wanted to talk about in this video. If you have any questions about what you've seen or any ideas of videos you want me to do in the future, then leave your comments down below. I read every single one, so your feedback is greatly appreciated. I also want to thank my amazing patrons and members on screen now, especially Mazard Rushman III for being so generous. And I'll see you in the next video where we go from looking to the past to looking into the future and having a look at a data classes feature that will hopefully be arriving in Python 3.13. So I'll see you for that.